Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're just going to wait for a couple more minutes for um, letting people join in, and we'll start the webinar. See you soon. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar. This is New Trends in Agile Test Management. My name is Susana Diaz, and I'm part of the marketing team here in QMetry, and I'll be your host for today's session. Joining me today is Harshal Bora. He is a product specialist for QMetry Digital Quality Platform. He has more than six years of experience in planning, executing, and delivering on-time quality end-to-end -end solutions in mobile development and has had roles of automation engineer, business analyst, technical project manager, and QA manager. Also with me today is Vishal Jala. He is a product architect for QMetry Test Management. He has more than 50, 15 years of experience in software product development in various business domains like quality engineering, security and access control systems, and supply chain management. Before I begin, I want to take this time to open the chat function. In case you are experiencing any trouble viewing the slides or uh, any trouble with the audio, please uh, please let us know by writing help, followed by the specific issue you have. Um, we'll be happy to set you up. And also, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, just so you know, this webinar is being recorded. And also, please submit all your questions through the chat window, and we will be addressing them at the Q&A session. And okay, now without any further ado, I'm happy to introduce Harshal Vora. Harshal, take it away. Thank you, Susanna. And good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. So um, before we go into the actual uh, presentation today, I would like to just highlight the uh, overall agenda that we are going to talk about. Uh, we, as the topic suggests, right, we are going to talk definitely about the new trends in agile test management, but uh, let's see what is the what is the software test development cycle right now and how agile and how digital transformation is making a big impact in this whole uh, transition. Uh, and then we will look at what are the challenges uh, facing the industry and how to overcome those challenges. And Vishal is going to talk about what are some of the best practices around it and how we can leverage uh, next generation technologies to adopt these newer challenges and overcome those challenges. Uh, so let's start with uh, 
some of the uh, challenges or, or some of the landscape items that we are seeing right now. And you can see a very complex system in the background. And that is the state of uh, software development right now, right? So it's uh, highly complex, it's uh, outcome driven, it's uh, customer uh, driven, and uh, it's customer obsession, right? And that is driving the whole software development landscape as well. It's, uh, uh, as you can see, it's uh, fairly complex. Um, it's very competitive and fast-paced. We cannot uh, rely on my two or three month release cycles in much more waterfall or maybe iterative uh, to get my software released. Uh, the main idea here is to get my software or my engineering velocity higher. And that's where agile and DevOps practices come into picture, where we want to adopt to this whole digital transformation. Also, uh, with this IoT and uh, newer generation technologies with connected cars and connected homes, uh, we need to have this uh, life-dependent situations where we need to uh, act accordingly in agile uh, methodology, right? Not only from the development perspective, but also from the testing perspective. Um, as as it takes the whole spiraling effect on the economy as well as the cost efficiency is affected by the same. And uh, if you look at it, right, it is something like this, right? Uh, we are always in the uh, on the go mode, right? We are, and you can see the train is going, but we are building the tracks as the train is going. So this is what we are facing as a challenge right now. So how does uh, DevOps and Agile uh, have changed the game in this whole digital transformation, right? Uh, whether it's a healthcare, whether it's financial institution, whether it's retail, everyone has har uh, harped down to this uh, journey of digital transformation. And the key initiators in this is the continuous testing. And uh, everyone says, whether it's a business team or engineering team, they, and they always like to say, my testing is the, uh, uh, um, is an impediment in my whole process. My testing takes like two weeks, even my um, release is set to go, My um, whether it's a functional test or a UAT test, everything is taking time because my testers, I have not automated the system or there is no DevOps or we don't have an agile system in place. And that's where this whole continuous testing for continuous delivery comes into the picture. And uh, what happens usually is there are silos from engineering to the business and testing teams which are also increasing the complexity in this whole digital transformation game. Um, one of the other things, if you look at some of the facts and figures, uh, even though the quality teams are uh, impediments in this whole process, World Quality Report says most amount of uh, the IT budget is allocated, uh, allocated to QA and test function in last four years, right? So um, since this whole mobile transformation or the IT, uh, IoT transformation has been into place, the QA team has had more responsibilities and accountability uh, to be driving force as part of this whole initiative. And that's where uh, DevOps, where it's just de uh, dev or operations, that's where the whole new term uh, that uh, one of our friend at Forrester has coined the term as dev test ops, right? So if you look at it, it's not only dev or ops driving the uh, digital transformation journey, it's the dev test and ops uh, in conjunction with the whole uh, IT organization is driving this whole uh, dev ops and agile journey. And that's where uh, we think that testing is playing a really crucial role in delivering this quality at high speed. And we all know what happens when we try to achieve either high speed or best quality. And that's where we, we need to have that balance of high quality at high speed. And that's where we all talk about going agile, right? And when we talk about going agile, what is going agile? It's something like this. Um, we get in a room, uh, we talk about let's go agile, and uh, we have a scrum coach or agile coach between us. He says, yes, let's go agile. I am the, I know agile. We can start writing uh, automation from day one. We don't need to do any uh, documentation and we are all good to go. But is that really agile, right? Uh, we need to figure out what is really agile. 
and that's where um, I think not only my product team or my engineering team or my agile coach has to play a role, but also the QA team members or my as the new um, uh, terminology in the industry goes, right? Quality assurance has changed to quality engineering now. And that's where quality engineering plays a role in this whole agile and DevOps journey. So what are the challenges? Some of the challenges that uh, are um, ahead of us, right? Uh, when we are trying to go agile uh, from the test management perspective or test automation perspective. And these are some of the challenges, right? We need to have uh, uh, shorter sprints uh, so that we can have better collaboration. We need to involve my um, QA teams from day one in the sprint itself rather than waiting for um, my engineering sprint to be over and then my QA sprint starts. And that's where the whole uh, in sprint automation kind of terminology is coined or the shift left uh, uh, terminology is coined. And this is not only a process, but we need a tool to help us do that. We need a mindset to help us do that. And that's where uh, it's the whole, uh, as it goes, right? People, process, and technology, that drives the whole uh, shift or the transformation for any organization. So uh, these are the different stages that uh, I'm sure each one of us live and breathe uh, day in, day out, right? I have some requirements, uh, the requirements are written, requirement gathering happens, and then development starts. Then we have this whole uh, build process, deployment process, and then at the end, the testing starts. And there are challenges at each stage, right? Uh, which introduces a lot of uh, disparities, a lot of uh, uh, bugs into the system. So if you look at it, uh, as say when I'm looking at the uh, requirements, there are uh, changes in requirements which might delay my uh, scope, uh, which might introduce uh, inconsistencies in my development cycle, and uh, all the way, uh, when it gets to the testing process, there are a lot of defects that are leaked into this process, right? Uh, and this defect leakage uh, is driven by uh, the communication gaps at each level. Uh, so my development team has done some development um, based on the product team uh, requirements, but my testing team has not even seen those requirements and started uh, uh, creating some acceptance test. Or uh, there is a new concept of behavior-driven development which is not new now, it's a, pretty, uh, it's a pretty old concept. It has always been there, but the adoption of it is getting higher because we want to move agile. We want to um, automate the more, uh, more processes. We want to uh, get the manual intervention out of the um, whole system so that we can uh, capture the uh, defects earlier in the life cycle. And the whole process of testing uh, earlier in the life cycle, discovering defects earlier, gets us to the end goal of achieving Agile and getting my product faster to market. So as I was saying, right, um, it introduces all the bugs and those bugs are right out there in the production. And we want to reduce those uh, bugs out in the production. So uh, that's where we have this traditional Agile concept where my requirement is done, uh, then I have my design, development, and testing, which is right at, uh, considered at the end of, and you can see the curve, the level of testing goes on increasing as we go at the end of the whole uh, life cycle. And again, uh, the main challenge here is, my ba most of my testing is at UI level. And I need to start earlier in the life cycle, which is the unit testing layer, where it's zero to 10% right now. And majority of the testing, which is about 60%, is at unit testing level, uh, which needs to be shifted. And that's where we want to introduce this new concept. Um, I won't say it's a new concept, but it's a, an up and coming concept, which has been adopted by a lot of enterprises. Uh, if you look at uh, Facebooks of the world or Googles of the world, or even um, the startup uh, companies like Spotify, which was a startup, they introduced paired programming or shift left model uh, for continuous testing. And that's where we got this whole new curve, which involves the level of testing earlier in the life cycle. 
right? So if you look at it, the um, my testing starts right from the requirement gathering phase itself, where my QA teams are involved from day one. I am able to start writing some acceptance test or behavior driven test on top of my uh, requirements and my automation gets kicked in earlier in the life cycle. So if you look at it, majority of testing is done at unit testing level and UI testing, which is uh, the, um, which my product team and engineering teams are always saying that uh, my testing is a, a bottleneck, that bottleneck we want to reduce to about zero to 10%. And that gets my product faster to the market as well. So how test management um, gets us to this uh, truly agile needs, right? We need to have a one, uh, uh, one system of records which can drive this whole process. Uh, there needs to be better collaboration between different stakeholders. There needs to be collaboration or integration between different systems. I might be doing some requirements or user story management in a different tool. I might be doing defect management in a different tool. And uh, test cases are written somewhere and execution is done somewhere. And automation is another challenge. And that's where we need a unified solution where uh, everybody can see um, or we can get to that traceability and visibility across different groups and different stakeholders and building that whole continuous testing cycle as part of it. So these are some of the roadblocks, right? So uh, for Agile and DevOps, as you can see, uh, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, that there is a big uh, roadblock when we are driving at a uh, when we want to drive at 50 miles an hour, when there are a lot of road, uh, roadblocks in this whole digital transformation journey, and that's where we are stuck at about five miles an hour. Uh, whereas our end goal is to get to 50 miles an hour so we can get to that engineering velocity that we want to. So how do we get about uh, this, right? And this new trends needs uh, to have these new tools or new generation technologies to be adopted. Well, uh, with a fresh approach, uh, we need to, uh, it's not only a tool game, as I said, it's also a process and a mindset change that needs to be adopted. So that's where we have this continuous testing and integration, right, where we want to test early, often, and uh, so we get to failure early in the life cycle, where this whole design thinking principle comes into the picture, where um, the design thinking teaches us that we need to the, uh, adopt our um, or adopt our idea earlier in the life cycle and test it out uh, with a feedback mechanism earlier in the life cycle rather than waiting till the end so that those defects are not le uh, are not part of my production the defects are found earlier easy to fix and my engineering cost is reduced as part of that uh, as my uh, engineering teams don't have to wait till the end of the life cycle or the product life cycle to find the defects as well as, as since it's a customer driven approach, we need to have that uh, and everything now nowadays is driven by reviews. Even if I uh, have to go out for dinner, I'll Yelp and see which restaurants has good reviews. Even if, uh, if, even if a restaurant is nearby, it has a bad reviews for me, I'm not going to go that, uh, to that restaurant because it has bad reviews. Similarly, in this whole economy, everything is driven by customers. And the feedback mechanism, if that feedback mechanism tells my product is not great and I'm not able to react quickly uh, to that feedback, then I have a problem. And that's where this continuous testing and integration helps us. Since we have automated the whole process, we have made those development cycles faster. We have made this, uh, and it is scalable, right? Uh, um, when I have a multiple or plethora of devices that I need to test on. We need to have that automation to be uh, integrated and uh, test management to be integrated as part of that whole plethora of devices or browsers for that instance. And automation is integral part of that continuous testing, right? So the automation, uh, we want to have uh, the whole digital transformation or quality assurance to quality engineering transformation. We need our uh, testers to be engineers now. And by that, I don't mean that they need to start writing uh, automation from day one, but they need to start involving uh, from the process perspective from day one itself, uh, where they are uh, more, uh, Agile in terms of doing exploratory testing 
right from the requirements gathering, writing the test cases and doing the defect management, uh, creating the traceability and visibility all across the organization. And then uh, the newer technologies, right? We want to uh, leverage this whole uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence as part of it, where we have predictive uh, and prescriptive analytics, which tells me, uh, say, from one uh, release to another release, these are the changes, then this is where I need to uh, concentrate or invest my energy and time so that uh, it gives me that actionable intelligence as part of that whole prescriptive and predictive analytics. So now we, uh, we are going to talk about what are some rules and tools for the game and uh, who best than Vishal, who works on it in day in and day out to talk about this. Thanks, Vishal. Thank you, Arso, and you know, uh, good morning or good day to everyone. Okay. Um, just give me a second while I... So uh, as we as we talk about best practices, uh, you know, um, as, as you bring in or select a test management tool um, that that you could use, uh, you know, uh, for for doing your testings, uh, ensuring that you have the right practices and the tools in your organization to support quality, and and to ensure that you know your products are delivered with good quality. Um, there are things that we could keep in mind, and 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 you know that would that would ease our life, uh, you know, a, a lot uh, as we as we mature in our process to build better and smarter products. Um, so so go, uh, so and and th and then these best practices have been kind of you know thought through in in terms of you know how can you be truly agile. How can you reduce your, uh, you know, delivery cycle from months to weeks, and and then keeping that in mind, what is it that 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 would be required to select the right tools and processes? Okay, so uh, one one of the most important thing, if you if you really want to deliver faster, there has to be enough visibility across all the team member of what's going on, right? That sharing of information and visibility of. Uh, each and every one among the team, what are they working on and where the product is heading, it's, it's really critical. Without that information, there could, be a, there could be gaps and then, you know, that could lead to further delays. Um, the other thing that, that, you know, I would personally look in a tool to support me in agile testing uh, is, is traceability. Uh, traceability is very important because you would need to know where the defects are coming from, which are the test cases that fail most often, what are the ultimate requirements uh, that that are having uh, you know higher issues, and and then you know depending on how you trace down these things and what are the patterns, you can make right choices and decisions on how to prevent them so that you know your upcoming cycles are faster and the quality is better. Um, continuous integration is one of those things that that's really required these days, uh, especially when you know uh, you have automated build process and you know uh, you you as as developers check in their code you want you want it to get auto build tested and deployed, uh, and 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 so you you need some sort of continuous integration in the tools you select. Um, behavior driven development is also uh, important because you know as 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 the business analyst and other roles would come in and you know they would write business use cases that needs to be validated and not necessarily that they are all having the detailed technical knowledge so it's important to uh, you know support a behavior driven development where you know a business analysts could write you know uh, the, the test cases in layman terms and you know engineers could uh, related back to the uh, uh, detailed technological development. The tool, tool set has to be, you know, um, integrated enough uh, in, in terms of, you know, it has to have the ability to integrate with uh, various other tools. It has to be open enough, uh, support some sort of API architecture, right, um, or probably a platform architecture. <clears throat> And, and then you know uh, uh, you know uh, workflows is, again it's it's important to have the right workflows uh, to to make sure that you know uh, there is there is some life cycle and and then there are milestones we can set around the same right uh, 
I cannot stress enough on how much important it is to, you know, automate a lot of these things because, you know, we have limited time and there is a lot to achieve, right? So uh, one of the things that we continuously look for is exploratory testing, wherein you kind of go and explore your application, right? And as, as uh, we as humans, we, we are tuned to go and explore and figure out what's going on, right? And, and that also forms uh, sometimes as the best test cases. So some sort of exploratory tool that, you know, that would record what we do as we explore the application under test. And then, you know, probably create automated documentation or even better, a, a BDD script. That could really help. That would save a lot of effort. And, you know, uh, basically that, that can also go as part of your regression testing, right? And uh, finally, you know, as we test, uh, and especially when we test it through these automated processes, you would generate lots of logs and information. And all that information, you know, it needs to be analyzed, right? And 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 it, we need to harvest information out of that inform uh, out of that data, and and that that hopefully would give us some sort of actionable intelligence in in terms of what what we should be doing with that information, right? So so predictive analytics is is one of those things uh, that that's becoming a necessity these days. Primarily because of the amount of automation and and going on and and the information that is generated by these tools, that's like humongous and and it's just not possible to manually, uh, you know, analyze them. So you need right predictive analytics tools to tell you what's going to happen next based on what happened in past. Okay. Okay. So so if. So for, for selecting a right test management tool, we, we usually recommend, uh, you know, some sort of cloud-based uh, systems, right? Uh, uh, primarily because, you know, you don't have to set it up. In 30 seconds, you would be up and running, right? And uh, uh, you, you don't have to worry about scaling. So if your team increases, uh, it's okay. You don't have to worry about securing your applications, right? And 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 then so 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 basically you know that reduces a lot of time. That also in a way makes you agile, right? Uh, so so go for if possible go for a cloud-based uh, test management solution as far as possible, unless your organization's policies are not restricting that uh, uh, that part, right? And uh, then the first thing that you would want to do is you know you would want to set up the projects and roles um, inside of your test management tool, right? So, um, and, and, and how you set up your test management tool is actually, you know, going to impact a lot in terms of how much effort you have to put to, you know, manage your test artifacts. And, and also, it will also ultimately impact the quality of the products you're building, right? So, so we, we need to pay some, you know, uh, we need to pay quality time uh, and attention while we are setting up the test management tool for the first time. And we have to also ensure that, you know, um, those test management tools allow you to, uh, you know, set up right projects and structures the way your teams are working, right, by teams. And then it, it also allows you to set up the roles and security that is required uh, so because many of your team members would be coming in and using, and we also want to make sure that uh, someone accidentally doesn't, you know, um, uh, update the data that, that they are not supposed to, right. Uh, Secondly, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, basically, it, it would happen that uh, test management uh, testing teams are using the test management tool a lot more, and you know, developers and project managers and business analysts they might be a lot they they are using other project management or product management tools like Jira, right? And, and so it's important that whatever happens in this uh, test management tool, again, ultimately goes back to their respective project management tool like Jira, right? Uh, it could be Rally or it could be anything else. But, but it's important that the information flows and syncs between the two tools and, and so that everyone is on the same page. If, if all, everyone is not on the same page, then, then agility is directly impacted and, you know, lack of information will lead to a chaotic situations and, you know, uh, last minute surprises. So, and finally, you know, your automation tool uh, should also support automation. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean, your test management tool should also support automation. And, and, and then, you know, you have to generate the right API keys so that 
uh, assuming that you know your your uh, test management tool accepts all the results, uh, test results, and automation results through API, you might have to generate the right API keys and set it up so that uh, uh, because no team no no team or project would have 100% automated or 100% manual testing. It, it is usually a combination of both. So it's important to bring in the automation result and combine it with manual testing result, um, and and then you know get a comprehensive view. Finally, you know, uh, it's it's important to have, define all the platforms. So let's say if you're building a web application, then you might want to test it on Chrome, Firefox, IE, and few other browsers. Uh, not only that, you might also want to test it on uh, mobile web browsers on Android, iOS, multiple versions and form factors, right? To really make sure that uh, your application that you're building is is it works seamlessly on various form factors and platforms. Uh, because you never know how people are going to consume your application, and so it's important to test on all those platforms, right? And the results could be very, very different on different platforms as you test it. So it's important to define those uh, platforms and set up the right processes before a product is released. You know, these are the minimum testing criteria that we have to meet. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, and then, you know, once you have uh, test management, uh, you know, the setup of the test management is done, you know, how do you go about it? How do you start it from the beginning, right? So you can you can uh, start by, you know, creating or impact, importing requirements. Uh, like, uh, and, and that's, it's important to start from requirements because if you, if you don't know what those requirements are and you just put in the test results, then you might not know about the test coverage, right? And then when you're taking a go no go decision, you would not have the coverage information. So uh, either you know create requirements in a test management tool or import it from some other tool like Jira where the requirements are being managed, right? And then you know uh, design modular tests uh, so that they can be reused. Uh, let's say login is something that you would use it in any test scenario, right? So then login should be a test case or a test step that can be reused uh, across all the test scenarios. And then you know it would um, it would not only reduce the authoring uh, effort because your team members could reuse that step, uh, but also you know if if the login flow changes, then you know uh, the maintenance effort is less because you just update one test step and you know it gets reflected everywhere it is being reused, right? And finally, you know it's it's very critical that we link test cases to requirements. Uh, so that you know we get the coverage that we are looking for. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, how should uh, teams use uh, test management? Um, okay. Uh, so uh, as you author test cases, you know try to figure out ways by which you can you know uh, reduce the efforts of uh, testing. Uh, efforts of uh, test authoring. One of the way, as we stated earlier, is to use exploratory testing and you know create automated test documentation. Right. So as you explore the application, uh, that uh, uh, you know a, a, a right exploratory testing tool would probably record everything that you do, uh, create a test case out of it, and and then you know that is something you might be able to use it directly inside the test management application. And, and then, you know, uh, talking a little bit more about automation, right? Uh, bring in all the automation results so that you can get a comprehensive view of manual and automated testing and, and also the uh, overall coverage so that you can make the right decisions. And then finally, you know, uh, create test suits by releases and platforms. Uh, you know, that's so basically test suits. What we really mean by test suite is some sort of grouping of test cases along with platforms and uh, you know uh, releases uh, that you plan, right? And uh, help uh, th that would help you track the quality of your software, you know, and and especially you know, are you improving in terms of quality, build by build or not, right? And then you know, uh, basically as you execute those test cases, make sure you log those defects and link those defects to those specific test executions. And, and also reuse those defects. So let's say if, if there's one defect blocking five different test cases, 
try to reuse that. So, so you know, um, that could be a very critical feedback for uh, development team that, you know, uh, it, for them first to understand what is the criticality of that defect and how quickly it needs to be fixed. And secondly, you know, how they're going to prevent those critical defects from reoccurring. Okay. All right, so now uh, let me go to the uh, demo of one of such tools. I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. And, Just give me a moment while I load the application. Yeah, so as uh, we went through this best, best practices, right, we are now going to uh, look at how those best practices can be realized using a uh, test management tool or next generation test management tool that uh, Qmetry is working on. Uh, and it's ready to be used by the community for agile testing, and here we are. So okay. why don't you go ahead, we shall. Uh, thanks. All right, so so this is one of those, uh, this is Qmetry test management, uh, you know, uh, cloud-based solution. Uh, uh, you know, as you log into this application, what you, what you see here is a dashboard, right? So, and, and the whole purpose of this dashboard is to, uh, you know, let a quality professional know what's, what's really important for him today, right? Now, one of the questions that we have to answer every day is what's the most important thing or a task that I need to finish today? And then what are the additional tasks that I would have to take care of eventually? And so, um, so as a tester, if I logged in, then the first thing I want to know is every defect that I had opened in past, what is the status of those defects? Are those defects, uh, you know, uh, did developers fix those defects? Are they blocker critical? Or what is the status of those defects? So that's the first thing we show you here in terms of summary, what happened to my defects, right? And again, this this view is going to be different for every tester, depending on the activities or tasks they have performed. The second important thing for me to know is that uh, what are the test cases I need to execute uh, and and uh, you know my my lead or my manager could have assigned me a lot of test cases. So this view tells me uh, all the pending test cases that I'm required to execute and that have been assigned to me by my managers, or I could have assigned it to myself as well, right? And then it also tells you the release end date by which I need to finish those testing. And when I click on it, I I, I would be taken to that particular view where I can go and look at those specific test cases. Okay. Um, uh, then, then, then comes the authoring uh, part of uh, the test cases, right? So let's say I created some test cases and they were linked to certain requirements, and the product management or the development team changed those requirements. So <clears throat> my test cases that I'd written earlier, they are invalidated and they may need uh, a rewrite or maybe some sort of modification, right? So this view tells me what are those test cases which needs to which needs a review at least you know and they could have got modified or they need to be modified okay. uh, uh, and then you know uh, the, uh, we also show you all the uncovered requirements that are not covered as part of uh, that does not have test coverage and and then you know as a tester uh, I might want to, if I have time, I might want to write more test cases and and you know uh, fill in uh, basically provide some coverage for those requirements. And finally, when I modify a test case, if that test case was a part of a test execution, I might need to re-execute those test cases. So that information will be shown here. So, so as, as, as you saw, you know, this, this view tells me all about, uh, you know, um, either it's execution or authoring. It, it gives me a precise information in terms of uh, what are the priorities for, my, for me today, right? So selecting a right test management tool requires us to, you know, basically we have to select a tool that, that gives you all this information, uh, which, which makes our lives easier in terms of figuring out what's the most important priority for us today, and, and also gives us the visibility that we are looking for, right? 
So um, the second uh, thing that I would like to show you here is the uh, you know the uh, executive coverage report that we are talking about. Um, in this particular uh, report, you would see that you know uh, <clears throat> there is a comprehensive view. So it starts from you know what uh, what, what are the uncovered requirements. So here, 32% of the requirements are uncovered, and then you know within within whatever is covered, how much is automated, how much is manual, and then how much is a combination of both, right? And then for whatever coverage we have, how much percent of it has not been run at all, even though we have a test coverage. And then, you know, uh, how much percent has passed or failed. So all those details are there. Not only that, these are drill downable reports. So you can click on any one of them, get into details of what's pending there, right? And finally, you know, as you might have executed, you might have found defects um, during the test execution. So this report also tells you how many open defects are present out of, uh, or how, out of all those defects, what are those blo blocker or critical defects, and what is the status of them? Are they past, failed, or, or you know, what is the current latest status, right? So this this report could help you in taking that go no go decision uh, uh, for uh, before right before the release. Uh, be, because it, it starts from the test coverage, goes all the way to the execution, and finally also gives you a comprehensive view of the defects uh, as, that were identified as part of this uh, test executions. Okay. The other important thing that uh, we have to look out for is the traceability uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, requirements, test cases, and defects, right? So you can uh, start searching either by requirements or by test cases or by specific defects or issues, and then you can identify the relationship between this, uh, you know, uh, requirements to defects, and then the current status and the platform uh, combined with the release information, right? Yeah, so, so this, this basically, this, this thing goes as a feedback to developers in terms of which modules and which requirements are being, you know, tracked to maximum number of defects or what is blocked. Right, so the other other question we might want to answer is what is blocked right now, and because of which defect. So those are some of the things you can figure it out through traceability. <clears throat> Finally, you know, I would also like to highlight uh, the reusability piece of it. Um, in terms of uh, you know uh, reusability, a tool should tell you what what components. Uh, I mean, how much percent or how modular your test cases are, and how uh, how are we reusing them. Right. So in this particular case, we are able to reuse a lot of our test cases, and and so it tells us like how how these test cases are be, being reused to you know uh, in terms of requirements, and so that is not only going to drive my uh, uh, you know authoring effort down, but also it's going to drive down my uh, you know maintenance effort, uh, and then you know you can we, the other thing that you can look at is what are those test cases that are not associated to any requirements? Maybe they are just stale old test cases that just need to be removed out of the system, right? So that's another thing that we can um, uh, take care of. All right, um, and and then of course you know a, a right tool would would need to have you know various other features like you know organizing the test cases like you, you need to have folder structure. You should be able to do bulk operations, you know, import or export um, test cases. And you look at a specific test case, it should provide you all the details. There is a there is a way uh, by which you can put estimates into a test case, right? And and then there are, uh, you know, you can manage various versions of the um, uh, test case, right? And you can have your own user-defined fields. There are this, uh, and then there could be detailed test steps. Uh, how these test cases are linked to a requirement. Uh, this test case could be a part of various test suits, and you know it would have multiple defects associated with it, right? Um, of course, the tool has to be you know extremely configurable and customizable uh, for users to use it. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I I think that would be all uh, in terms of you know quick demo for the uh, tool. So let me stop sharing uh, uh, this one, and you know, let me reshare the presentation. Okay. Yeah, and with that, I would like to just conclude on a note that how uh, this kind of tool can be used, uh, and uh, how one of our existing customer used it in terms of overcoming their challenges around agile test management, right? So. Uh, um, uh, the company is a globally uh, distributed company. They have teams who are geographically distributed in different time zones. 
and uh, they have about 90 offices in 40 countries. So the pain point was how to get everyone collaborated uh, in terms of getting the end result, whether it's from the testing perspective or the engineering perspective. And they have plethora of tools, as you can imagine, right? Even uh, in one location, they can have multiple tools, but they are spread across 40 countries. So they have multiple locations and uh, multiple tools. And the m major challenge they had was the test collaboration. and. Uh, zero to minimum visibility uh, with uh, limited reporting and metrics. Uh, other in Jira integration was one of the biggest uh, challenge they had. And the automation, right? And manual testing was there uh, in their existing test management tool, but there was no way to get their automation results back in, right? Uh, and that's where uh, Qmetry, um, they evaluated our product uh, for about a uh, 15 to 30 day period and they were able to see those results and they started using those as part of their production release itself, right? Rather than uh, trying out, out uh, for say, uh, their test cases only, they started out with the production release and they were able to see that that uh, the modularization and customization that Qmetry was able to give as well as the integration with automation uh, where they have one system of record for manual testing or automation testing that helped them a lot uh, achieve their releases um, faster than their previous releases. Since uh, uh, the stakeholders were able to get the reporting at the time, they were able to make faster decisions that, okay, we have done this much testing, but we need to uh, reallocate resources on different kind of testing since that is not covered. So that gave them that uh, control and flexibility over that whole uh, testing uh, period. And that's where uh, that uh, Qmetry helped them accelerate their whole digital transformation and agile transformation journey during uh, uh, that one uh, trial period itself and that's where uh, they have been a customer for over a year now and uh, uh, they are able to get or realize the benefits of this tool um, um, pretty hands-on. So with that, uh, I think we uh, had uh, from the presentation perspective, this is what we had. If uh, any of, uh, of our viewers or listeners have any questions, we are here, me and Vishal, we are here to answer those questions. Thank you, Harshal. Um, we have some questions that have come up now. Uh, so let's start with the first one. Um, Okay, so maybe this is for um, Vishal. Mm -hmm. So the question reads, how do I need, um, okay, no, I, I think that they meant, uh, why is there a need for a customizable test management tool? Okay. Uh, you know, basically every organization is different, right? Um, and then the teams are different, the products they make is different, and the processes are different, right? So it's important that, you know, basically it should not happen where, you know, you have to change your process and, and culture, team culture, to meet, to shoot a tool, right? It should be the other way around. A tool has to be customizable enough so that it can align to your unique culture of your team and the processes and, and and then the projects you're building on. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why, you know, I would want a customizable tool to, shoot, tool to shoot my needs. And just to add on that, right, you cannot try to fit a square peg in a round hole. So there is no uh, generic solution to anything. And that's where we knew you need a, a modular and customizable uh, test management tool. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Moving on to the next question, uh, Harshal, this one might be for you. Um, so they're asking about the term predictive quality analytics. Uh, the question is, why are predictive quality analytics important for DevOps? And uh, what is the process involved for this? It's a very uh, interesting question, right? So if you look at it, there are like multiple questions in this one question. So uh, how we define predictive uh, quality analytics? Uh, so predictive quality analytics are the metrics or some actionable uh, intelligence that uh, this newer generation technologies 
like uh, machine learning and AI can help us to prepare better for the uh, follies or failures that we might encounter uh, in our production system, right? So it helps us to plan our test uh, cycle or our release cycle uh, based on uh, say certain releases. For example, right, if I am making such, uh, a change from sprint one to sprint two in uh, say a, a help module, then it tells me in a predictive manner that since you are making code changes in the help module uh, from sprint one to sprint two, you need to make you need to ensure that your help module test coverage is x percentage or if you don't have test cases for that help module it will tell you that you need to write test cases for that help module so you get better test coverage for that help module during sprint 2 and that is where the predictive quality analytics will help you in devops as well because you are trying to get to that continuous testing cycle and that's where uh, this predictive analytics can plug in those uh, actionable intelligence as part of that DevOps cycle, where you can build that automation earlier rather than waiting till uh, the feature gets developed. So rather than doing regression, you are doing new future testing. Okay, sounds great. Um, this next one can be for both of you. Uh, so the um, user is uh, currently on Jira for project management. So can Qmetry integrate with Jira? Uh, yes, absolutely, yes. I think Qmetry provides, uh, you know, um, a bi-directional sync up with Jira. It can not only sync uh, requirements, but it can also sync, uh, you know, uh, defects, uh, uh, you know, and then the linking between all those defects, test cases, and also, you know, for a Jira user, it can show like uh, you know what 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 is the status of those test cases uh, that that have been executed there right so a lot of times uh, you know you get enough information within jira where you, where there is no need to go back to qmetry and you can you know uh, just uh, you know uh, just just by looking at the jira uh, developers and project managers could get to know a lot about the quality uh, or the testing progress on those particular stories and requirements Perfect. Yes, integrations are very important for test management tools. And uh, following up on that, um, uh, okay, the next question says, um, how does Qmetry help um, bringing the software testing stage to the requirement stage? So we saw the curve in which testing was coming up in earlier stages. How does this tool help um, the process move towards left? Yeah, so by uh, so the whole idea here is to have that better collaboration, right? And uh, involve your quality teams earlier in the life cycle. So what we saw in that curve where uh, we are shifting that level of testing at the requirement stage by involving the approaches of BDD, uh, involving uh, the best practices around traceability and visibility where we are linking my test cases to requirements. So as soon as my product team is ready with their user stories or requirements, as a QA team member, I'm ready with my acceptance test or behavior-driven test on top of it, as well as I can start writing automation on, uh, earlier in the life cycle as well. So rather than waiting my uh, waiting for the whole engineering sprint to be over, I am bringing that uh, my QA sprint within the same sprint as the engineering sprint, and that's how we uh, Qmetry by bringing that visibility and traceability is able to get that curve earlier in the life cycle. Okay, um, one last question. Um, okay, so let's go with uh, how does Qmetry product development is using new Agile test management? Okay, uh, I can take up that question. So, you know, uh, first of all, you know, we, we use our own products um, uh, in, a, in a lot more, uh, you know, deeper way uh, for testing what we build ourselves, right? So it's more like drink your own champagne. And uh, we also have a product called Qmetry Automation Studio. 
we use it heavily for automating the testing of uh, the uh, other products that we built, including uh, QS itself, right? There is a, there is a lot of uh, automated unit testing uh, that goes in, uh, followed by a REST API layer testing, uh, yeah, so which is more like a functional testing where each and every type of scenario is validated. And finally, you know, we use exploratory testing uh, through QMetry Voyager. Uh, wherein you know uh, we just explore the uh, user interface, and as we explore, uh, you know, uh, some of the, we also end up generating automated test documentation as well as you know uh, writing, uh, you know, preparing a boiler uh, code template for automation, which can be reused later on, right? And and then all of the that data that that is generated in the whole life cycle of testing goes into our analytics tool wisdom right which does all the big data big data analytics and generates you know actionable intelligence which again further tell us how to you know improve the quality of the software and reduce the bugs or catch them way earlier in the life cycle rather than catching them later right and the, these tools also capture some of the production logs and try to make sense out of you know where the exceptions are coming and then try to predict in uh, you know where what are the modules where there is a possibility of you know customers reporting bugs just by analyzing the you know um, production logs and other things, right? So, so yeah, we 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 extensively use uh, QMetry Shooter for us internally as well to to make sure that the quality of our products are really great. That sounds amazing, Vishal. Thank you so much, and uh, that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, there are still some questions that have not been answered yet, um, though rest assured we will reach out to you with the answer. Also, um, if any other questions come up, you can always reach us at marketing at qmetry.com and we'll get back to you um, ASAP. And before we say goodbye, we want to thank all of you for joining us today. We hope that this session has been very informative and insightful for you all, and that it has um, been a good update for all of you to keep your software testing skills up to date. And um, we will be sending out an email with a promotional code so that you can join the QMetry Professional Beta Program. Uh, we will be providing a link to access the recording as well for this webinar. And stay tuned for our follow um, for future webinars and events. Uh, if you're interested in any topic that you'd like us to cover, uh, please reach out to us at, Q at marketing at qmetry.com. And thank you, everybody. Happy Thursday.